You're probably pretty familiar with the classic tech support scam, right? Say that there's an email that arrives in your inbox from Microsoft or Geek Squad or Best Buy or Norton Antivirus or whatever organization and company scammers might be impersonating and saying with a notice or renewal or confirmation details that say, oh, an invoice was paid or a subscription was renewed, something fake, something that's a lie, something incorrect to scam you into, oh, actually picking up the phone and calling the number they provide in the email. Once the scammers have you on the phone, they'll be impersonating the support team, and they'll ask you to install and run software that will grant them remote control over your computer. Think software like TeamViewer or AnyDesk, Screen Connect, UltraViewer, and there are a ton of these out there, but did you know there is some tech support remote control software that is built into your computer? It's shipped with Windows, included by default, by design, Microsoft official software, Quick Assist. Now I'm inside of a Windows 11 virtual machine. I'll fire up the start menu and I'll start to type in Quick Assist and that is literally it. That is the Microsoft official remote control tech support and helpful capability to let someone you trust, and that's the key word there, view your screen or take control of your computer. You'll need to supply the security code from the assistant, like anyone really, hey, anyone doing things for TeamViewer, AnyDesk, the usual setup. Now say that on another computer, a technician or a help desk representative or support team member could actually use Quick Assist to remote control another device. If you wanted to, at any point, you could actually use a hot key to spin this up. The Windows key, the control key, and the Q all at the same time will bring up Quick Assist. Now with that, we could actually scroll down. We don't need this get help section, but we can move to the help someone section, in which case we can click that button. And this should prompt us with a new security code that we could give to the individual who would type that in so that we can control their computer. The same way you would for TeamViewer, AnyDesk, any of the other remote control software. This code should expire in 10 minutes, but with that, that alone, you or anyone else in this time window could actually control that computer. Now back on that other machine, I can go ahead and paste in the code. We'll hit submit and I'll put these side by side so you can see the two connect. Super small example here, but you can see Quick Assist in action is exactly what you think it is. This will ask if I want to allow screen sharing, John H, it'll include the name here. So we'll click allow and with that, hey, now that individual could see the screen. Here, I know this is a little bit weird with my face in the way, so let me move this, but obviously I am, hey, controlling that other machine. If I go ahead and request control, that's that top button up here, I can go ahead and request control. Obviously on that other host, we would end up clicking allow to allow that to happen. Now, even on the right hand side, as I am in that other dark theme window, I could still control anything from the other left hand side screen. Do anything I want. So depending on your risk assessment, your threat model, really your paranoia, right? You might see this as a security weakness. Like why is Quick Assist, why is this built-in thing just inherently native and natural to the Windows operating system? Well, again, it, its functionality has good intentions. It's not to say, oh, that is malware by any means. It's just oftentimes abused and leveraged by scammers and real, like genuine threat actors, hackers and adversaries. This is an X or Twitter post from Microsoft and their threat intelligence team. And they say since mid April of 2024, Microsoft threat intelligence has observed the threat actor storm 1811, 1811, whatever you call them with, you know, Microsoft namings of threat actor groups, misusing the client management tool Quick Assist to target users and social engineering attacks that led to black Basta ransomware. Ransomware. I know we were starting with tech support scams and phishing emails and business email compromise, but no, that can turn into real malware. You know, that opens the door for ransomware and other damage. While we're on that topic, it's worth digging into how we can actually limit or reduce the attack surface. Like Quick Assist doesn't have to be there if it's not in use by your organization. We could block its usage or just remove it entirely. And we'll do that next, but before we do, I'd love to tell you a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, IBM. 
Have you ever been tempted to click on a link like this? It happens to the best of us, myself included, but you can be confident in your security with proactive threat intelligence. IBM Security helps protect enterprises with an integrated portfolio of products and services infused with AI automation capabilities that enables organizations to predict threats, protect data as it moves, and respond with speed and precision, all while allowing innovation. Understanding attacker tactics is crucial to protecting your people, data, and infrastructure. And adversaries are shifting from ransomware to infostealer malware, where data theft and information leakage is now the most common impact on organizations. Check out the 2024 IBM X-Force Threat Intelligence Index to find insights and observations obtained from monitoring over 150 billion security events per day across more than 130 countries. And I'll be honest, from my perspective, I'm in absolute agreement. From what I can see in the trenches, InfoStealer malware is running rampant. But you can safeguard your people and data with IBM X-Force and their 2024 Threat Intelligence Index. Download the Threat Intelligence Index and learn more about IBM X-Force with my link below in the video description. jh.live slash xforce. Huge thanks to IBM for sponsoring this video. All right, now I don't mean to drag you down the rabbit hole here with this article right up in report from Microsoft saying threat actors abusing quick assist in social engineering attacks leading to ransomware. This is very recent though, this is very current. This came out in May of this year, even given an update in June, the current month at the time of recording. And we could see this threat actor even abusing Microsoft Teams as another vector to contact and target users. You can see how they use other tooling, oh, evil proxy, batch screen, system BC, et cetera, et cetera. But quick assist is really what they end up using as I don't want to say a rat, you know, you can't say remote access Trojan, but it is remote monitoring and management in a certain way. It's remote control. So you see screen connect in the conversation, net support manager and others in the mix. But I think it's wild to see quick assist being the actual vehicle here to do damage and to wreak havoc open the door for ransomware as a service, and of course, tech support scams. This is where we get down to the nitty gritty. Organizations can reduce the risk of attacks by blocking or uninstalling Quick Assist and other remote management tools if the tools are not in use in their environment. Like if you are a ConnectWise shop or Kaseya or Datto or Ninja or a Terra RMM, anything, whatever, as long as you know what you naturally use with your infrastructure and for your tech that you work and the work that you do, then remove what is rogue and an anomaly to that. Quick Assist is installed by default on devices running Windows 11. Yeah, well, we could try to clean that up. Additionally, tech support scams are an industry-wide issue. Scammers use scare tactics. Uh, educating users on how to recognize such scams can significantly reduce the impact of these attacks. Ooh, this goes on for a little bit to chat about those. And of course you could see, oh, help desk, help desk IT, help desk support, blah, blah, blah. A little bit of a quick walkthrough on quick assist, uh, everything that we've already showcased, and then some of the TTPs, some of the IOCs, some of the details chatting about the Black Basta ransomware. Again, I don't mean to bore you with these, so let me get right over to the recommendations. Because Microsoft themselves literally say, hey, just consider blocking or uninstalling Quick Assist outright. They mentioned, look, you could use something called Remote Help that is actually coming with Microsoft Intune. That's another, hey, Microsoft big fella for doing some of that remote support. And then educate folks about these tech support scams. And of course, you should not be allowing anyone to control your computer unless you initiated this conversation. Unless you trust and you know, you acknowledge and reached out to that organization or that company, they would not be the ones calling you to ask for the ability to remote control your computers. Interesting though, I didn't know that Microsoft has a technical support scam form, but that's apparently a thing. All right, let's look into blocking or uninstalling Quick Assist. I do think this is a little hysterical because this is the official Microsoft documentation and that article titled Use Quick Assist to Help Other Users and their little table of contents in this article preview. You've got a couple other options here if you wanted to show four more. One of them is Disable Quick Assist within your organization. So we can go ahead and click on that. They do mention their remote help utility with Microsoft Intune, but if you wanted to just simply disable or remove Quick Assist, we can do that here. Now this is pretty easy, right? Because look, ultimately there is 
internet traffic because this all is, is remotely. This is over the internet to offer remote support to anyone in the world. So if we could just nuke, nerf, clean up, remove, block some of that traffic, we could just as easily with remoteassistance.support.services.microsoft.com. That is a lot of subdomains. And this is worth noting because this might be what we could defer back to. There's of course the opportunity to uninstall Quick Assist and we'll do that using PowerShell. This is super easy. It's literally just one command. We can copy and paste the syntax and we'll do this just after, but I would like to showcase that blocking the traffic idea because even if you remove or uninstall Quick Assist, users could just add it back in via like the Windows and Microsoft store. Back on my Windows 11 host here, I'm gonna open up a terminal run as administrator. I can right click and enter that or hit control shift and enter to start it up. We'll open this and with that, I actually wanna move into C, Windows, System32, drivers, etc. And inside of that directory, then I could work with the hosts file. Now, I've shown you this before, obviously, super small, super simple, super easy way to block traffic to a given domain. It's just adding a DNS sinkhole. I've opened up notepad in that directory and we could just simply add an IP address to point to a domain. Or we'll say, oh, that domain should actually resolve to whatever we want. I'll use 0.0.0.0 .0 and we'll actually say, oh, rather than acme.com or google.com as what that would tie to, let's use the remote assistant domain that we just saw from Microsoft's documentation. Let me go ahead and grab this, remoteassistance.supportservices.microsoft.com. Copy and paste that. We'll paste that here and I can save this file, just control S on my keyboard. And with that, I know it's just at least on the endpoint in a small, simple way. You could be doing this with your firewall in a network environment or whatever. But now if I use that hotkey, control Windows key and Q, opening up Quick Assist will fail. <laughs> we can see try again later. Something went wrong on our end and we're working on it. And now you'll never particularly be able to get quick assist to work as you fire it up. So that may prevent some users from, oh, accidentally letting scammers, threat actors, hackers control their computer. But that is only one option, right? I know we just had that as an opportunity to do DNS sinkholing, but What's to stop us from just simply removing it as we saw suggested in the documentation? Now that that line is removed from the host file, by the way, I can control Windows key Q and open Quick Assist as normal here. We could get help, start a help session, do whatever we'd like, but let's now remove it with the PowerShell command. This is one of those special Microsoft apps. So you'll have to use the PowerShell commandlet get app X package with the name Microsoft Corporation Quick Assist and pipe that to remove app X package for all users. So let's copy and paste that one. Of course, you could do this via GUI if you wanted to, but with this, you could at least push it out with PowerShell Remote and Group Policy, whatever. Now, let me go ahead and paste this in. I'll hit Enter, and honestly, we don't have to do anything else. Uh, now, it is removed. You see, I've got a prompt, no complaints, no errors. Let me control Windows key and Q. Uh, well, now we don't have that MS Quick Assist anymore. That protocol handler looks like it's gonna start to whine. If I start to search for quick assist, it's just not there. We've removed it. That error message is interesting though, with the MS quick assist link. Is that a schema? Is that like a protocol we could use? Let me run that with win. MS quick assist colon slash slash. Well, does that work? Hmm. I didn't know that was a protocol handler. <laughs> you could totally set that to anything else if you wanted to, and then probably have that automatic hotkey with control windows and Q. That's neato. <laughs> Here is the thing though. Obviously, if you were to browse the Microsoft Store, users very well just could download and install Quick Assist. So it's probably worthwhile to just block some of that network traffic to begin with. If I just hit get on Quick Assist, there we go, that app is now installed. You could of course deny or block access to Quick Assist with AppLocker or WDAC or however else you do, deny lists and allow lists for applications and programs running on your devices. At the very least, I feel like, hey, if you're not using Quick Assist, if there's no reason for it to be available on your computer because you don't use it in your environment, you can just block the traffic or uninstall it I know it's easy to be added back in, but at the very least, it is an extra step and more we could do to better security.
if I may say, some of the conversation that followed this article from Microsoft and the Threat Intel report was discussing how just as easily you could block or remove Quick Assist. Uh, Nathan McNulty, absolute genius and wizard, showcased another quick thing so you didn't have to deal with the etc. host file that I did. There is a command line or at least a PowerShell commandlet to add DNS client NRPT rule with the namespace and any other IP address and you'll block it the same way we did earlier. As usual, there is a lot of good conversation here discussing what's good to do and really what's realistic or even probable or makes sense in some environments or better conversations on all this. So again, I just wanted to bring it to you, have some more education and bring that to light. But with that, it's not hard. That is one way you can stop scammers from controlling your computer by uninstalling, removing, or disabling Quick Assist. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things. Please give some love to our sponsors, link in the video description, and I'll include the details for the links, the articles, everything that I got to showcase in this video. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.